It's a much anticipated brand new season of the European Le Mans series beginning here in the tiny, tiny corner of Spain in Catalonia for the four hours of Barcelona, a track that most of the teams know incredibly well. It does offer a real challenge. There's a little bit of gradient change more than you would expect. And the reason why so many teams from Formula One to GT to prototype uh, outfits all test here is because it offers so many different types of corner. Gone is the chicane. Well, it's still there, but we're not using it this year compared to previous times. And therefore, the opening lap scramble, tangle, less likely to happen. But what it does mean is the cars are peaking at a much higher top speed earlier on the long straight here we're already underway now the first thing we've got to tell you graham goodwin of dailysportscar.com joining me johnny palmer is that in the elms this year there are effectively four classes yep. two of them are the same in terms of spec lmp2 and lmp2 pro-am but that gives us four individual qualifying sessions and they're all now no longer 10 minutes they're all 15 minutes yep they are and there's lots of reasons behind that one is to reflect the interest in the lmp2 pro-am class 11 cars in that class this year with the bronze drivers talk about that when we get to them the 15 minutes from 10 is because these cars are starting on stone cold uh, tires and already Duncan Cameron has found out what uh, challenge that is. He's gone around uh, at uh, the exit of turn one in the 55 Spirit of Race Ferrari. It is 12 of these magnificent GTE cars, three different marks. It is uh, three Aston Martins, we'll call them as we see them. It's four Porsches and five uh, of the uh, Ferrari 488 GTEs. The final race season for the GTE rule set. And that's uh, Michael Fassbender in the completely different livery, number 93 car, as we see yes. Duncan Cameron going off and lucky to stay out the gravel on the exit there, actually. Yeah, uh, the 93 no longer in the emerald green. There's almost a bit of emerald green on the Duncan Cameron Spirit of Race car. That's a livery he designed himself a, a few years ago, and it's gone through various iterations since then. Car Guy, a name that you will know very well from the World Endurance Championship if you've followed their season so far at Sebring and last weekend at Portimao. So this is a Kessel racing car but carrying the Car Guy sponsorship because of Takeshi Kimura sharing with Scott Huffaker and Frederick Schandorf. Indeed, a familiar car, a familiar livery and a familiar driving squad on board with the number 93 car. That Car Guy livery, by the way, Done with highlighters, takes 4,000 man hours to actually colour in that car before every race. You can take that seriously if you like. It's not the 1st of April, is it? But it's highly possible. Um, the other interesting thing for me was working out the Huffaker family, because on the WEC entry list you get a Scott Huffaker, on this entry list you get Gregory Huffaker II. The it's the same. They're the same person. Same, same they guy. are the same person, the same date of birth, funnily enough and therefore doing a dual entry of both WEC and ELMS. The uh, LMEM have designed champ the championships to work well together. Also great to see a new paint scheme for one of the Proton competition cars. That was Ryan Hardwick. Well, sort of. If you were with us for the FR World Endurance Championship for in Portimao last weekend, you will recognise that colour scheme. You might recognise the car because it's the one Proton competition operated car that will do double duty this season. Uh, they have a fleet of eight of these fabulous Porsche 911 RSR uh, GTE cars, uh, including the cars they're operating this year for Iron Lynx. We'll see the solo effort from that team uh, shortly, I'm sure. The other bright yellow car in the order here. This is the Car Guy uh, Kessel Racing 57 car, but the number 60 car operated for Iron Lynx. Is that the same chassis for Ryan Hardwick? I would doubt it. I would it is the same chassis. No way. So they, I, I they did raced double the Portimao. Uh, yeah, I double-checked the car, and it does indeed have the scrutiny sticker from last weekend. And we'll go to Spa next weekend. We'll go to Spa next weekend. Wow, OK. There's a lot of mileage in between venues, let alone well, the amount done in circles. It, it does. It, it explains, by the way, why we've had a bit of a change to the original timetable here at Barcelona this weekend. Originally, the original timetable would have been the European Le Mans Series prologue test on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, but it's an eight to nine hour truck drive from Portimao, and of course they've got to put everything in the truck first. So they switched that around. We actually did, uh, did uh, Tuesday for the Michelin Le Mans Cup, 
ELMS tested here Wednesday and Thursday. It's been a long couple of weeks for these teams, and for those teams, and there are plenty of them that will carry on to Spa immediately after this race, it's going to be a long three weeks. Yeah, yeah. We will, of course, Indeed. see a change uh, to the timetable after the cancellation of the Imola race. We get to that when we get a bit more time to talk about it because we're beginning to get times in to the top of the times, by the way. Castle Racing and Takeshi Kimura at 1.44.068. But Ryan Hardwick, uh, second quickest, seven tens off, but uh, going through the next time around with a purple sector. Bronze only session, this, remember, being the one of two Pro-Am categories and fascinating for me in a couple of sessions time in the Pro-Am LMP2s, it's a bronze only session for that as well. So we're not gonna get, it's unlikely that we'll get an LMP2 Pro-Am on pole, something we had on several occasions last year. Here is a, a, a marriage of paint scheme with car that doesn't quite look right, I suppose, but we better get used to this. GMB Motorsport taking victory in the Michelin Le Mans Cup GT3 last year with their Honda NSX. In fact, they took first, second and third in the championship. And Honda don't make a GTE car, so a selection process needed to be done. And with Christian Poulsen's history with Aston Martins and the Dane train and all that, makes sense to transpose the GMB colours onto a Aston Martin Vantage. All Danish management team, all Danish driving team. The only thing that could be more Danish is that Aston Martin was made out of Lego, to be honest with you, but it's not, I can assure you, as we see one of the other Aston Martins, three in the field. This is a 72 car, uh, which is the all Sathwa, the uh, all based around and in Le Mans. And Arnold Robin takes the track for his second session of qualifying today because he puts the GT3 version of this car on pole in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. There have been some concerns about uh, the BOP, hate to say it, uh, for these cars, but he's doing well so far, third quickest with that effort from uh, Arnold Robin. One of the two Robin brothers will share that car with Valentina Arzaclo, uh, the Aston Martin factory driver. And, uh, We'll see that car at Le Mans as well. Here is Michael Fassbender, Hollywood actor, of course, as well as now uh, experienced race driver through Porsche One Bank Racing and now in, is this his third season? I think it's his fourth. Fourth season of the European Le Mans series. And uh, still able to follow this effort, by the way, in the superbly produced uh, Porsche YouTube documentary into the hundreds of millions of views now for this, and quite rightly so brilliant behind the scenes uh, look at what an effort it is for a professional race team with an emerging non-pro driver which is what Michael is and the stresses and strains that that imposes on not just the passion but also the drive the, the physical pressure the mental pressure that this discipline of racing puts on people the real downside of that documentary is that it features at times me and you yeah tragic so we can only apologize for that but yeah. it, it's only fleeting so you yeah, know, you can put just up turn that. the sound off absolutely ryan hardwick goes to the top ahead of takeshi kimura just a shade under a tenth quicker kimura did uh, uh, did improve his time but ryan hardwick improved just a little bit more so the 16 car at the moment at the top of the time seven minutes 20 seconds to go so into the second half of the session arnold robin is going quicker than he's gone before uh, he comes through and is still third, 0.127 of a second uh, behind Jens Müller in the GMB Motorsport Aston Martin. He's just on the two, uh, two tenths back, and then we've got a bigger gap before we get to Duncan Cameron in fifth place. So it is Ryan Hardwick Porsche, Kessel Racing to Kishiki Kimura uh, in the uh, Ferrari, and TF Sports on the Raban in the Aston Martin. All three makes separated by 0.127 of a second, and we won't talk about BOP again. We welcome back this year Johnny Lawson and Formula Racing to the European Le Mans Series. They are former champions, 2015. 15, actually. with Michael Mack, I think, uh, who's also in that car for the race. Yeah. Uh, the addition to that squad, it's our other all Danish crewed squad in GTE, uh, is Conrad Lawson, that is Johnny's son. Yes. So second, first and second generation um, racers in one car and two brothers in another car. Uh, in this class and we've got another pair of brothers by the way in another session later on with the return of the La Haye brothers to the European Le Mans series after an adventure in the WC they're back in the ultimate team in LMP3 this season so uh, Conrad Lawson would have been 
the tender age of nine years old, I reckon, when that 2015 championship season happened for Andrea Rizzoli as well. So uh, you had Mikkel Mack and Johnny Lawson who are returning with uh, uh, the son in the Lawson family, they're based in Copenhagen, and uh, he is silver rated, so plugs into the driver combination very nicely indeed. He's a former F4 Denmark champion, in fact, a handful of years ago. Here comes Duncan Cameron, avoiding the chicane as everyone is doing this weekend. Much faster approach, therefore, to the start finish straight and out of Catalonia corner itself. The 55 car over the line to show some improvement again, although staying in seventh position. Indeed, uh, we've got the times beginning to pop up. But up here. I'm looking at the form of the JMW Motorsport. This is the new look for the JMW Motorsport car, the number 66 Ferrari, the grand old lady of this field. And I'll explain that remark in a moment as Martin Berry comes through to what is a very competitive lap time here. He goes to the top, and the JMW Motorsport number 66 car, a 141.060. And Martin Berry puts the car on top of the times, and Jim McWhorter watching at home. Uh, yeah. After suffering a bit of a nasty injury, Jim, uh, unable to join us here in Barcelona. Hope to see you at Le Mans, young man. And uh, that car, as we watch Michael Fassbender, up in sixth place, by the way. Good run there from uh, Michael. That uh, 488 GTE in the final year uh, of the class, debuted at the 2017 24 Hours of Le Mans won that race and has competed in every Le Mans 24 hours and every ELMS race since. An extraordinary piece of motorsport history, that Ferrari 488. And Martin Berry, originally from Australia, but lives in Singapore and uh, makes the move to ACO Rules Racing after a couple of years, well, GT3s and also uh, five years ago in the Audi R8 LMS Cup, in fact. has come out of Ferrari Racing, Asian P Pacific champion, 2017 so knows this car and its behavior this is for uh, putting his experience to good use Greg the, yeah indeed and uh, lovely guy as well uh, real cheerful part of the po the, uh, the paddock this is the number 50 car seventh place at the moment from Johnny Lawson this kind of deep burgundy uh, livery I went twice into the air of Corsa carriage in the lighting they had there before I realized it wasn't black uh, and it isn't, you know, as you can see there, it's this kind of deep purple in certain lights. almost looks like a kind of chocolate brown, but uh, lovely colour scheme. Christian Reed here, one of the most experienced men on this or any other grid. Uh, Co-owner, of course, of Proton Competition. Uh, props up the times at the moment. He won't be happy with that. This is a much better lap from him. Currently 12th, coming down towards the end of this lap. What can Christian Reed do? about the challenge from Martin Berry and the rest. And I think he's going to launch himself up the order here. It's not a million billion miles away from the uh, the leading group on the pace he's putting in here. Looking to see whether 20, his track limits the final turn and he stays 12th. He'll be very unhappy with himself there. And I've zero doubt will be getting uh, telling off when he gets back to the garage, not just from his dad, not just from his brother, but from his son, who is racing in the team's LMP2 car. Yeah, Jonas in the number 99 Orica. We will see Jonas, well, not in action for qualifying, but during the race tomorrow. Oh, big oh, wag of the tail just? there from Martin Berry. He held on to it expertly well, but there's an indication of how hard he's pushing. He will have lost quite a bit of time now through the middle sector. It was the middle sector that earned in that lap time for me earlier on, yep. the 141.0, because he did a 40.5. Do you know what? He's not that far away, a 40.7 this time, despite that big wiggle of the car heading out of turn eight. And this is what one of the great things about these qualifying sessions for the bronze drivers does it increases their skill set it increases their drive it increases their enjoyment which is why they're all here in the first place uh, but more than anything it's the racecraft it's about putting that lap together looking after the tyres looking after the car he crosses the line it won't be an improvement just six tenths off that that by the way would still have been good enough for, uh, for eighth place on this grid yeah. even yeah. with the mistake Exactly, so just need to tidy up that run out of the downhill approach to seven and then the climb out of it. I mean, we're not talking about huge gradient change, a la Spa-Francorchamps here, but there is a bit of up and down nature to it, particularly in the early sectors, the first sector and then heading into the early part of the second sector on the approach to turn seven. GMB Motorsports, Aston Martin, Jens Moller, 
installed for qualifying. Remember, the driver makeup in GTE has to include a bronze. The second choice is generally silver, but that can be bronze as well. The final choice entirely up to you. And we've got platinums and golds galore in that final column, but they won't be seen until the race. Into the final 40 seconds, who can cross the line before the end of this session to start another flying lap? As we see Takeshi Kimura put a purple sector in the middle sector here, mm -hmm. and he's almost on pace to grab this pole position. Currently third place, could leapfrog Ryan Hardwick, might leapfrog Martin Berry if he could do something in his final sector. Just look and see where the 57 car is. It's going to be tight. He might even squeeze in, you know, another lap here. The 57 car is the only one with an improvement uh, worth mentioning right now. He has crossed the line. He goes second. It is 0.113 of a second off pole position to make it at the moment an all Ferrari and an all bright yellow Ferrari uh, front row. The clock has expired. That is going to count out a number of cars uh, from continuing their drive, including the 50 Formula Racing car, the 60 Iron Links and this, the 95 TF Sport car. Uh, but Takeshi Kimura has an opportunity if he can keep this lap together of improving on a lap time that's put him on the front row and the potential to set pole position. He was the 2019 Asian Le Mans Series champion with Kai Casalino, who's here this weekend, and a certain James Collado now driving 499p Ferraris. He's Absolute best for Kimura as we talk about him through the first sector now and could potentially outpace Martin Berry's time by 22 thousandths of a second. That's how nip and tuck we're talking about. It's so tight. Yeah. Martin Berry and the team at JMW Motorsport, I'm sure Jim and Val back at home as off the track goes the 72 car. That's bad news for Arnold Robin and the uh, the TF Sport. They will do no better than fourth. It is a uh, middle sector in a purple sector as well. Sorry, it's a, it, it was it was a track limits lap. I'm afraid for JMW Motorsport. Uh, no apologies. He's crossed the line, hasn't he? That's why we're showing the purple sector. Two tenths down in the middle sector from Takeshi Kimura, as I gather my thoughts and everything else. Can he do anything about this pole position time, or is it simply going to be two yellow Ferraris on... Well, it is going to be two yellow Ferraris on the front row. It's just in which order. It was a fast run through the final turn. I don't think he can quite do it. He doesn't. But what a close finish mm. in the... GTE qualifying here in Barcelona, Johnny. It is going to be Martin Berry for JMW Motorsport on pole position. Kessel Racing, second place uh, with Takeshi Kimura. And Martin Berry, as I say, earned most of that super lap time through the middle sector because Kimura, having set a time 22 thousandths of a second better than the JMW Motorsport prancing horse through the first sector, he then he was then two tenths of a second off Martin Berry's time in that crucial middle one. So well done is the word from the JMW Motorsport <laughs> mechanics. They're very very happy with that afternoon's work for the crew, the JMW Motorsport crew, who have so much history with this particular car, and he shares it with Lorcan Hannafin, yep. who is a talent from the UK, and John Lancaster, uh, coming was, back into the European Le Mans. Well, series. himself, an uh, ex, uh, John was a previous overall champion, wasn't he? 16, 14, something like that, with Greece Motorsport. I swear he won the title. He did, you're right, yeah, 2015. 15. So it's actually the Oops. same year uh, we were talking about earlier on with the Formula Racing Ferrari. It's come back here for everybody, isn't it? Yeah. Come one, come all. I do wonder, and by the way, I've just texted uh, Jim at work, so I hope you're looking at your phone, Jim, uh, as well as the TV screen, to just get him to remind me when the last time was that JMW Motorsport set pole position. OK. Um, but that's some performance. Martin Berry will be utterly delighted with that. Yeah, yeah. It will take some time for the smile to disappear from his face, I can tell you. A man that loves his motorsport. There he is. There is Martin. Doesn't even have the decency to look as if he's tired, does he? Well, it was a full commitment, particularly middle sector, but he wasn't hanging around in sectors one and three either. 141.060, a tenth of a second quicker than the 57 Kessel Racing car of Takeshi Kimura. Third was Ryan Hardwick. Good going in the Proton competition, number 16, ahead of TF Sport. Let's get some reaction there with our new pit lane reporter, Steph Wentworth. I am with Martin Berry, uh, the guy who's just put it on pole position, car number 66. Congratulations, that must have felt really good. Yeah, no, it's uh, pretty happy about that. Wasn't quite expecting it. Uh, it's my first weekend in a GTE car this weekend, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but uh, 
you take it when you can get it. So, but it's a long race, so qualifying is not overly significant, but it's nice to get a good start. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Martin Berry, the strong Australian accent, but as I say, now based in Singapore and has done plenty of racing in Asia, in the Asia Pacific Ferrari, um, all Ferrari challenge, winning the 458 class six years or so ago, but has raced in the 248 series at Dubai in the Spa 24 as well. And uh, comes here with relatively little, well, if not no GTE experience. He's had to adapt to different setup of cars, but has done that brilliantly well. I'd suggest he's done pretty well indeed in his first experience with GTE machinery. They've had a fair amount of running this week to get used to it, but either way, some hugely experienced gentleman drivers in that field has come out on top. Uh, already on track, Johnny, for the 12-car LMP3 uh, session. So already a minute into this session as the uh, the dozen, I'm not going to say dirty dozen, uh, are out, out there. It is uh, two Duquesnes, ten Ligiers, some familiar team names, some familiar and some new driver names to get used to uh, this season as always. And uh, as always, some different colours, different numbers, all sorts of things just to confuse us. So we look uh, to the screens, the number seven car there from Nielsen Racing. That is Ryan Harper Ellum. And Ryan uh, was on top of the timing screens uh, for a couple of sessions this week. You, your name to get used to here. The Fubble My Colours of one of the two RLRM Sport cars were on board with the other car. The new white, black and orange scheme really can pick that out of the pack without a shadow of a doubt. For those with slightly longer memories in the ELMS, Ryan Harper Ellum has actually featured in the he championship. But it was only a one-off event at Paul Ricard in 2020. That was a very disrupted year for obvious reasons. Spent much of last year with, in the Le Mans Cup, though. Did the whole season with graph racing. So at least knows another rung of ACO rules racing. But yeah, Ryan is uh, into LMP3 and joining Tony Wells. So new Indeed. teammate for Tony. Yeah, and that's all you has come for all sorts of reasons. The, the driver ranking situation often uh, gives a bit of ebb and flow to this. Welcome back, by the way, to the European Le Mans series to the ultimate team. That is yeah. the, uh, the Liche, shared by the La Haye brothers, Jean Baptiste and Mathieu. And in this session, in the hands of Mathieu La Haye. And uh, I predict he will feature at the sharp end in this competition. That car run for Ultimate Racing, but Ultimate rather, by Graf Racing this year. And they welcome Eric Trouillet into the lineup, don't they? I'm not sure he's raced with Ultimate before, no. He's, it's a, it's it's a regular with Graf. Uh, indeed, yes, indeed. so that's where the connection has been made. But Francois Ariot, who I always think about as the, as the bronze driver in uh, Ultimate, they have uh, parted. Yeah, he's racing in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship with another French team, TDS Racing, this year. Uh, they still remain firm friends. Okay, he's looking, absolutely, he's right. absolutely looking for uh, new experiences. That's part of what the, the the joy of this sport is, isn't it? There's so many choices on these ladders now. So going through for the first flying laps, Mathieu Lehay goes to the top, 139.088. Ryan Harper Ellen a 140.269. They're the first, first two drivers to put in anything like representative times. Let's just see who comes through with anything close to that and uh, nothing coming quite yet. Pedro Perino, a name we've not seen before in the European Le Mans series. D-Car Engineering, though we have. And the number four car goes second, just under a second back from La Haye. And all of a sudden, timing screen is starting to light up with blue and purple sectors. Blue, if you're watching on a timing screen, um, is a sector that is quickest for that driver, that car. Purple is the overall fastest sector of the session. New colour scheme to get used to from a team that uh, took the title last year. It's Marcus Siebert this time, the Argentinian driver in this cool racing number 17 car. Uh, we retain, by the way, one of our champions from last year in the European Le Mans series. And you will see him uh, either in qualifying, only he won't have been qualifying because he's in a pro am car. But uh, Melty Jakobsen stays with us. But I'm absolutely sure that Mikey Benham. And Elamis Santa, I know you must be telling, uh, so, so that Mo Smith will be watching in. Uh, their team, their guys, uh, taking it to the rest in LMP3, LMP2 Pro-Am and LMP2 this season. 
Marcus Siebert, the 27-year-old from South America, goes fastest then, 136.1. Uh, but that immediately changes. Ryan Harborellum now for Nielsen Racing in car seven, jumping up. So he's got the 136.1. Uh, Gail Julien for RLRM Sports, second fastest in the 15. And then it is Mathieu Lehay in the cherry red and white colours of Ultimate. Uh, Valdemar Eriksson for RLRM Sport, number five going four fastest. And Pedro Perino, the guy you were just talking about in the DKR Duquesne, fourth, uh, fifth fastest in car four. Uh, to the second, I was about to say it, every single timing sector for every single car, blue or purple. Uh, this is beginning to light up this session. Here is the number 12 car in the hands of Oscar Tinho. And uh, this is eighth quickest at the moment, the WTM Racing by Rinaldi at Duquesne. Great colour scheme on this, the Wockenspiegel backed car. Daily newspaper in Germany, of course. And what can Oscar Tinho do for this team? He crosses the line, goes to the top, is what he can do. Great stuff there. Duquesne to the top from Nielsen Racing, Racing Spirit of Le Mans, RLRM Sport, the Racing Spirit of Le Mans car, of course, uh, in the LMS, courtesy of the championship win in the Michelin Le Mans Cup last year. It's Antoine Duquesne uh, aboard that car. Quick driver, had a terrible luck last season yes. in the LMS. Marcus Siebert grabs it back to cool racing in this tussle. Two purple sectors there, 0.4 of a second quicker this is a qualifying session that looks set to entertain. So 0.4 of a second the margin separating Marcus Sieber from Oscar Tugno as now Gael Julien somehow finds a gap between the two of them on their times. The RLRM Sport car then threading the eye of the needle at least on our scoring and Ryan Harper-Ellum improving on that lap again as well. No, in fact he didn't. There was another movement. It might have been Anton Ducat actually slotting into fifth place in the racing spirit of Le Mans car. We've got Marcus Siebert over the line and now on a, an even faster lap, potentially absolute best through that first sector that takes you to the braking zone for Repsol Corner, turn four. Yeah, and almost a tenth of a second up on the uh, first sector, which is no mean feat, as crossing the line uh, from fifth is an improvement. Goes to second, Antoine Ducan. So cool racing, racing spirit Le Mans, uh, RLRM Sport, W10 Racing by Rinaldi, Nielsen Racing and Euro International, uh, Glenn Van Berlo uh, aboard that car. They are your top six from Pedro Perino, who was top just a few moments ago, of course, with DKR Engineering. This one is changing by the moment. It is two purple sectors from Marcus Sieber. Here he comes, at the moment, almost two tenths up on his previous best time. So it looks to more than double his... Uh, advantage if he can keep this third sector together it looked pretty neat and tidy for me where's he going to be he does indeed it's 135.250 three and a half tenths to the good from Antoine Ducan now as is typically the case in LMP3 qualifying it is down to so often who has got the track position who's going to be the last over the line as the tyres continue to give performance they take a while to get up to temperature this year uh, but we'll wait and see how much that, that pace can be sustained as Antoine Ducat for Racing Spirit of Le Mans last year's Michelin Le Mans Cup P3 champions car 31 now second fastest and by only 0.36 of a second Gael Julien for RLR still in third ahead of Oscar Tugno for WTM and Ryan Harper Ellum for Nielsen Racing number seven yeah, just watching where the next move is going to come from. I think if he can get a decent lap in, actually the bottom car in the order, it's the number eight car from Team Virage, 12th overall at the moment for Manuel Espirito Santo, uh, but his pace is good. He's just not uh, kept it neat and tidy on track limits. Uh, on pace, should not be finishing down in 12th place, but there's plenty more to come from what is it, just over five and a half minutes remaining in this session. Yeah, so the track limits uh, circle is illuminated on one or two of the previous laps. Therefore, no improvement permitted if you've gone outside the white lines, all four wheels off. There's also carefully constructed rules down at turn number one about uh, rejoining in the right and proper manner. Uh, indeed, uh, I, I said it, and it, it, it happened, but not in the way I intended. Uh, Manuel Espirito Santo did indeed improve on the last lap. But track limits in the final sector needs to keep it neat and tidy. Yeah. 
Just caught a glimpse there of the 22-year-old from Denver, Colorado, Wyatt Brishacek. Brickacek. I need to check with Wyatt exactly the right pronunciation of his surname. I know he did Asian Le Mans series earlier he did. On this year into Le Europe. Pole. Yeah, leaps up from 10th to 5th with that effort. So that's yeah, a good effort going. for the racing bakers. Still some Piquet Junior. Uh, looks on from the United Autosports pit. He's featuring an LMP2 Pro-Am effort this year. One of her... Uh, I mean, when we get into LMP2 and Pro-Am, honestly, the the entry list this year, we won't see all the drivers in this session because, of course, it's a bronze-only Pro-Am session. Absolutely astonishing lineup yeah, in yeah. European Le Mans Series this year. Absolutely amazing. And were we to get a, a latest safety car that bunch, bunches the field up, then oh, the yeah. Pro-Ams could properly get stuck in to matters. They most certainly could. And remember, it is a uh, point for qualifying this time for the Pro-Am for the first time, and their own championship standings as well. So a proper class, standalone class. Yeah. But before we get into that, let's finish with this. This is the ultimate car. Uh, that car did top this session early on, but Mathieu Lehay dropping down the order now and not looking as if that car's going to come back out to play any further part of the session. So is that a problem for the ultimate car? Let's hope not, because it's uh, early on in the weekend with the race to follow tomorrow, 11.30 start. We're on air 20 minutes before that with all the build-up. Valdemar Eriksson, the man from Aalborg, Denmark, is currently piloting the... Um, the RLRM Sport number five car, which is in tenth position. Goes to the pits, though. Yeah. And uh, yeah, another young star coming to the European Le Mans series. It's attracted all sorts of attention. Great to see so many young guns coming into sports car racing and making their way through. We've seen it with the likes of Jotte Nutert uh, in recent years. Nielsen, another. And uh, Milton Jakobsen more recently as well. Uh, by the way, did uh, drop a line to Jim McWhorter back at home uh, to ask when was the last time that JMW Motorsport set a pole position, and he says it was about 1939. Thanks, Jim. OK, <laughs> thanks for the information there. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be gutted not to be here. That was Absolutely a good year, gutted. though, wasn't it? It was very a very competitive. good year. Mm, yeah. I, think, I think their 458, which is the previous car, was around by then, but uh, there you go. But uh, glad to hear you're with us, uh, Jim. I'm sure you'll be with us throughout the race tomorrow to see... Uh, Martin Berry and the guys starting the 66 car from pole position but before we get into any further discussion it is Wyatt Brickercheck he's up to second place now in the LMP3 class can he just make the next leap forward three tenths of a second he's got to find on current pace he's halving that gap so this is an effort that's coming can it come in time two minutes to go and he is the one man here that's looking like he's going to make any kind of substantial leap here Matthew Richard Bell, we've got two Matt Bells mm. here this weekend, we'll, we'll talk about that at some other point. And that was, I think, wide. I think that may have been just slightly track limits for that. Coming out of the final corner for uh, Wyatt. Maybe. Either way, it's cost him time. Yeah. Well, certainly Manuel Espirito Santo for Team Virage was uh, oh, pinged for track trouble limits. Trouble for the brake car. Well, that's the car in question. Manuel Espirito Santo has been pinged for track limits, and there is the reason why. That's Way pretty, off the track. That's completely... That's pretty conclusively track limits. And by the way, um, Jeff Carter, the LMS uh, media delegate uh, here. Uh, red flag. It's a red flag, and that will, I'm sure, with the end of session, because not enough time for cars to go around to start a lap. It was, astoundingly, JMW's last pole was Portugal in 2018. Which may well have been Estoril. Yep, five years ago. That is yep. quite yep. amazing. Indeed. So we were racing at Estoril rather than Portimao in those days. Portimao wasn't invented back then. No. Portugal was barely invented. It's, it's Indeed. Uh, it's a very new track at Algarve, slightly older than uh, Graham's making out, but nevertheless, uh, good to be going back there. In fact, for a double header indeed. this year at yet, the end of the season. Yet to be announced how that double header will work. That's because of overrunning paddock works at MLO, which means there are... There you go. There's the celebration, which can now begin at Cool Racing. Well done, Marcus Sibet from Argentina. A nation, of course, with a proud motorsport history. But uh, so, Emma, we will not um, be visiting this year. 
bad news for me, for you, and for the local gelateria. Yeah. They uh, always look forward to our visit. There, they do. They? Oh, yeah. It's, it's basically closed the shop for yes, us to, uh, absolutely. to circulate. Just privately. give us our own spoon and we'll get on with it. That's disappointment, isn't it? It he certainly is for Manuel Espirito Santo. He'll, he'll be disappointed with his performance. It was not the most disciplined, but uh, more disciplined and fast. Uh, Marcus Tibet. So, cool racing's efforts. A team that's got a proven heritage of looking after incoming talent could he be the next great stuff back with the car for Manuel Espirito Santo so we'll have a slight delay before we get to the LMP2 Pro-Am let's talk a little bit about that before we get a chance to speak to our pole position sitter as I'm sure Steph Wentworth will be sprinting down there um, this 11 car class in LMP2 Pro-Am some familiar names in the uh, the bronze rankings as we look at the timings there. 135.250 for pole position for Cool Racing there, uh, the 17 car. Ahead of into your pole, three tenths back and just a smidge uh, away the Swiss team racing Spirit of Le Mans, the number 31 car. W10 Racing by Rinaldi with the first of the two Decanes, then RRM Sport, Nielsen Racing Team Virage and the first of the two Euro International cars. Uh, the top six cars uh, separated by just eight tenths of a second. So uh, slightly ill-disciplined qualifying there. More times, track limits yeah. than we've perhaps seen, but that's probably just a mark of the guys getting used to the uh, cold tyres discipline that's going to be required. That will improve through the uh, through the season. It's also been very dusty offline, I've noted. So if you are not on the prescribed racing line, easy to lose out there. It's the seventh pole for Cool Racing. Let's get some reaction with Steph. With driver number 17, Marco Sibert, you've just put it on pole. Congratulations. Yeah, it was a really good lap, good effort for me from the team, uh, from my team as also. We were looking really strong from the prologue already. So yeah, really happy with the lap. And we have four hours tomorrow to race, so let's keep it on. Yeah, and it's a really tight grid with these LMP3s. What do you think you guys are able to do in the race? I think we are looking okay. Actually, in the prologue and in the race, in the long, long runs, we are looking really good also. So let's see what we can bring home. All right, well, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, and anybody uh, looking at the uh, the quiz question, who set the last uh, JMW poll <laughs> yes. before uh, Martin Berry? Probably, I wouldn't have guessed Miguel Molina, but uh, that was the answer. Uh, great stuff there from Seabet. Uh, great stuff from Martin Berry. Next up is going to be LMP2 Pro-Am. Um, and as we say, some familiar names amongst the bronze drivers in the LMP2 Pro-Ams. But just, uh, just a quick look through uh, the more prof the professional drivers aboard those cars. And you find Jack Hawksworth. He is a Lexus factory driver in the United States. Nelson Piquet Jr., ex-Formula 1, of course. Paul DeResta, current hypercar driver and ex-Formula 1 uh, driver. Matthias Besch, a WC overall race winner. Louis Delatraz, multiple champion in sports car racing. Uh, Nico Lapierre, uh, yeah, one of my favourite guys in the sport, to be honest with you. Ex-factory driver for Toyota and for Peugeot as well. Juan Pablo Montoya needs no introduction. Indeed. Ben Barnicotes. Actually, Jack Hortz with teammates in uh, Lexus Factory Drive. Uh, Jimmy Bruni, multiple world champion uh, in the WEC. And that's just one quick look down the order. Mathieu Vazivier is in that, uh, that uh, Malta Jakobsen we've already mentioned. Charlie Eastwood, the reigning uh, Asia Le Mans Series champion. Ben Hanley, uh, multiple race winner in LMP2 and multiple karting champion for that matter. Uh, Guy Smith, a 2003 overall uh, Le Mans winner, of course. This, ladies and gentlemen, is LMP2 Pro-Am. We're yeah. not even talking about LMP2 yet. No, no. So it, it, it gets even stronger, if you like. Uh, in the top top class but we'll get to LMP2 straight in a moment or two because we've got 15 minutes of bronze qualifying for LMP2 Pro-Am so every team must have one bronze at least and then now are you allowed two platinums potentially with a bronze or is it going to be a platinum as a gold as, I as think an absolute you can maximum? have what you like right well we haven't got two platinums but we've uh, the maximum lineup for example is nicola lapierre malta jacobson and alex Kwan. session will start at 15 
30 and 30 seconds. So 33 15, seconds 30 from now. 30 and 30 seconds. Uh, you can hear the very familiar tones of our race director, Eduardo Freitas. Well, there's, there's a couple of uh, uh, platinum gold bronze with Matteo Vazavier gold, yep. Ben Bonico platinum, and the very shiny bronze of uh, Francois Perodo, a four-time WC champion now. Session. Welcome back to Dragon Nine, Speed. Eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Session has started. Please remind drivers to use the first laps to heat up the cars. Please remind drivers to use the first laps to heat up the cars. I've answered my own question. Driver times, which is issued as Appendix 5 in the sporting regulations for the European Le Mans series, there is nothing listed for a uh, bronze, platinum, 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 platinum. So, so you can't have two platinum. So your absolute maximum is one platinum, one gold, and then your crucial bronze. You could do two golds and a bronze, but you can't have two platinums in with the AM driver. Well, let's call who are the bronze heroes going to the bronze and bronzed in some of the cases who've been uh, on holiday, obviously. Uh, but the 11 uh, drivers out there. DKR Engineering's number three car, their first full season of the European Le Mans series in the LMP2 machinery. That will be Tom Van Rompuy. It is Dennis Anderson, and we'll explain why uh, in a moment for Team Virage in the number 19 car. Very late replacement. Fred Pordad from the United States in the number 20 from Algar Pro Racing. Two cars in this class from uh, United Autosports USA. Daniel Schneider from uh, Brazil and Jim McGuire from the United States in the 21 and 23, respectively. Rodrigo Sales, a previous Asian Le Mans Series champion in the all-gold uh, Nels uh, Nielsen Racing car, the 24. Sally Yolik in the Racing Team Turkey, the bright red and black 34 car. Alexandra Kwani makes his comeback in Europe after a comeback in the Asian Le Mans Series a couple of years away for Cool Racing's 37. Edric Edmund, a man who has won LMP2 races overall, very rare for a bronze rated driver uh, for Dragon Speed in the 81. AF Corsa and Francois Perodo, we have already mentioned in the 83 car. And the 99 Proton Competition car, Proton with their debut in LMP2 in Europe, uh, is Giorgio Roda. LMP2 cars be on standby. So that is just, uh, just a bit of housekeeping, uh, getting the next and final class ready for their 15 minutes. Uh, qualifying session. We will see, of course, times improving throughout this session as the heat comes into the tyres, as the grip comes uh, to these cars and the confidence levels rise. Cracking stuff coming in the next 30 minutes of track action. When we get to the race tomorrow, 11.30 start, remember, Sunday here at Barcelona. LMP3 cars inside their garage on their wheels under Parc Fermé. LMP3 cars inside their garage on their wheels under Parc Fermé. That's uh, instruction for the outgoing sessions. We've got LMP2s preparing for the next session and P3s, of course, needing to follow instructions following their 15 minutes. But when we get to the race, minimum drive time for these bronze drivers is one hour. Now, a stint length in LMP2. Just over 40 minutes, depending on how far we run in green, weather conditions, you name it. So, uh, awkwardly, and it's done deliberately this way, it's a stint and a half. Break, so, basically, basically so you've got a choice. Yeah. You, can, you can basically compromise your strategy or you can show confidence in the ability of your bronze driver. Yeah. It really is a call about what happens in terms of the overall uh, run of the, the rub of the green, if you like, what happens in terms of cautions, what happens in terms of uh, incident and accident out in the race, uh, race in, particularly in the first hour. But as you quite rightly said at the top of the show, if we get an incident stream first hour here, boy, oh boy, could we see uh, 18 LMP2 spec cars with, by the way, this year, the power levels in the European Le Mans series turned back up to close to the original 600 horsepower. And aero? Uh, aero they for are these, permitted. These, these are the higher downforce kits on the car, so that it's the kit they would prefer to have in the, the series. That is it's, not allowed in the WEC. It's not allowed in the WEC. When, when and if these cars uh, have qualified for the Le Mans 24 hours, they will do so with less power and with the low drag, lower downforce kit. Yep. Time's already coming in then. Alexandre Clanny. There's Guy Smith, yeah, for a quick glimpse of him in United Order Sports. But Clanny, the Swiss driver, to the top very quickly as the uh, quickest bronze driver so far. But this will take a very similar uh, complexion to the, well, particularly the GTE 
qualifying session where times will continue to tumble, you sense, all the way through the 15 minutes. 0.6 of a second ahead of Florida-based Swede Henrik Hedman. Then it's Giorgio Roder. So Dragon Speed second fastest, Proton Competition's 99 third quickest. And this, for, certainly for the ELMS, a first time to see Proton as part of the prototype class. Yeah, I did say we'd explain why Dennis Anderson is in this uh, in this, this session and will be racing for Team Virage Squad. Nasty incident, nasty accident in uh, the bronze test yesterday evening for Rob Hodes. Uh, big impact with the barrier, and I was actually delighted to see the car was actually going to be able to race. It was quite a lot of damage from that car. So Rob, uh, on medical advice, is not going to be competing this year. Dennis Anderson, a regular, of course, in the past in the LMS for high-class racing, based here in Barcelona, mm -hmm. has uh, picked up the phone. Good on him. And uh, the Dane, the Barcelona-based Dane, will be racing this weekend in the Polish flight car multinational effort of course that is the proton competition uh, car that's almost like tire tread three-tone yes. blue over the top of the car but it looks very cool well the multinational effort that we're talking about this is the, the car that won the daytona 24 hours yeah it's an x i think an xr pro car pro car if you didn't watch the end of that race do take a look on youtube or similar uh, it could not have been more dramatic at the end. James Allen, who is in a different car, uh, which is the point I was kind of edging my way around to, taking that win from uh, uh, on the line uh, from Ben Hanley, who will not be thankful for me reminding him of that, of that moment. Not. Uh, but uh, uh, trouble there for Eric Edmund, the number 81 car. Yeah, was uh, in second it's position, second fastest that a little earlier turned on. turned around. Has that spun, do you think? Or has it just run off the track? Difficult to work out, but it's certainly letting off it's some got, smoke. There's a lot a brake of fire. Brake, yeah, heat in the front brakes. Goodyear shod uh, LMP2s in both of the Pro and Pro Am categories. Yeah, Goodyear uh, putting their rubber on the corners of these fabulous LMP2 cars around the world. And announced just a few days before we travelled on this. It might just be a braking problem, you know. I wonder if he's got a binding brake. I think he may well have. He's pulled straight off there. Knew there was a problem. So it may well be uh, just a braking issue for Enric Edmund. It is a red a flag. flag. Not a surprise. He's not in a, a very comfortable place there. So we're going to a red flag with eight minutes remaining. Yeah. Gianluca Rota there on the right, uh, in the middle of those three, uh, next to Jan uh, Jimmy Bruni. And it is his son, Giorgio. The Rota family um, deeply involved in motorsports, not just in different generations, but uh, we've had uh, fathers, sons, uncles in this level of motorsport. Long may that continue. I think he's had a brake system failure there, you know. It's um, um, it's not... Possibly. Uh, it's too early for that those brakes to be that. Yeah, OK. That I, I agree that they should not be that hot. And maybe at the end of a four-hour race, then you would expect that. It's not it's not a dangerous fire, necessarily. No. But I just wondered then why the car wouldn't move anymore. But if the front left is clamped entirely on, it's pinching the caliper. It's then. got flames in both sides. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the concern I've got. They, they are going to attend to that with a... What they don't want is one of those flames to just heat something up True. in the system around it. So I think most of it's gone out, I think on the right-hand right side of the car anyway. They're keeping an eye on it, and that's exactly what they should be doing. Good to see that but from the very experienced marshals here uh, in Barcelona. Part of the Royal Automobile Club of Catalonia, RACC. And what this may need now is actually a straight lift if one of the wheels or more than one of the wheels is locked in position yeah. effectively because so of that binding brake. So Dragon Speed rejoining the European Le Mans series after, uh, I think, one season away. Uh, they, I think, ran a partial season in one of the, uh, the COVID-affected years, but they've yep. been away running in IMSA. Attracted back um, very publicly, uh, said Elton Julian, because they wanted to run their LMP2 car in the place where they're going to have the most performance. And that is right here at the moment. The car's running different power levels in the United States and in the World Endurance Championship. Uh, this year and that of course is all to do with this process it's a fabulous word stratification making sure that you keep the classes of car apart the principles of international sports car racing is we're running multiple different races on the same track at the same time oddly doesn't apply here 
uh, with the two LMP2 classes because these two LMP2 classes are running exactly the same performance. The differentiation here is the driver gradings. Yes, indeed. So not actually any difference in specification. You're right that the last ELMS season for Dragon Speed was in 2021 and three races. Yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, the Dragon Speed car appeared. Henrik Hedman will have been the ever present, I'm sure. But I think Montoya, uh, Juan Pablo Montoya, had a, a one off event in he, that I season. Think, I they think cycled he did. through a number of superstars. They did. Uh, they did. That's exactly what they did. And uh, they're also, by the way, I believe the only team to have won LMP2 races in uh, the European Le Mans series, in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, and the FIWC. They right. have taken wins in all three. And uh, you're right, they've run a galaxy of stars. They're also, well, by Ricky the way... Ricky Taylor ran at the equivalent Barcelona he meeting did. in 2021. Absolutely. Did. I'm glad you reminded me of that. I think, didn't Matthias Pesch do a, a race with them as well? Yeah, probably. Uh, yes. but uh, we'll check. But Montoya, I think, then featured at the next event. No, hang on a minute. Red Bull Ring Dragon Speed were there, and Gustavo Menezes. Ah, it's Menezes. There was joined. Gustavo Menezes. Uh, the other thing to mention, of course, is their previous champions in the LMS, albeit yeah. under the G-Drive banner. Um, yeah, good point. So they did win the championship with uh, the current generation of machinery. These fabulous Gibson-powered LMP2 cars, which have doled out so much entertainment. It, it, it is a sort of, you know, international sports car racing secret that some of the best racing in sports car racing comes in the European Le Mans series. But we're constantly reminded of that by the loyal fans that are watching us around the world. And welcome to the broadcast on YouTube and on other uh, streaming platforms as well as all of you that follow on social media That's, uh, whether that be Twitter on the Facebook pages and indeed of course on Reddit and the Discord servers that take such a pinpoint interest in sports car racing you're very welcome to join us uh, this afternoon as yeah and Rick Edmund gets oh, a bit good. of encouraged by the moped ride that's bringing you back to the pits looked to me like there's not a lot that Henrik could do there there was clearly no, a indeed. problem with the car the ripple of a round of applause, though, that he's OK and he's able to go back to the paddock It'll on be rotated. his scooter. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> emotions aside, what we want to see is uh, racing drivers get out of cars. And it wasn't it wasn't uh, an incident that involved a collision as such. But nevertheless, th there's that moment where you think, what on earth is going on? The car's been prepped for several hours, especially for this session. There was a free practice session earlier this morning, which hopefully saw all three Dragon Speak uh, drivers take a chance to pilot the 81 car but it's, it was all about this bronze session and positioning it well on the grid but it's caused the red flag so it won't be allowed to continue even if it was in a fit state to do so it's and it remains to be seen whether he can hang on to the 137.4 he's already posted almost f1-esque drone shot following the uh, uh the swedish driver back to the pits Speak about building work taking place at Imola. There's plenty of it also being conducted here at Barcelona with that new building just to the inside of the scoring tower that's been here for many, many years, if not from the beginning of the Barcelona circuit. I'm sure when that uh, building is in uh, full use, the ticket prices for F1 will be roughly equivalent to an afternoon here with the European Le Mans series. Just adding a couple of zeros. Indeed. But, uh, you but can, of course, come along to any of these races this season. And for that matter, the World Endurance Championship uh, ticket prices around for still for Spa for next weekend. If you're not able to be one of the 300,000 people coming to Le Mans this year, an absolute sellout. You can still get to Spa next weekend for the FI World Endurance Championship. And trust me, get along to an ELMS race. There's nothing quite like it in terms of access to this amazing grid. There are always... Uh, uh, there is always the opportunity to enter the paddock. Yeah. There is always an autograph session. And we've read out, the, num the names I've read out, that's a, that's a smattering of what we've got Pit here. exit is now green. Pit exit is now green. Session has been resumed. Yeah, Eduardo Freitas uh, cuts my nonsense by deciding to throw the, 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 uh, the session back to green before I start trying to sell tickets for something else. But <laughs> Well, Spa, <laughs> WEC next weekend, but Spa, the ELMS weekend, is always a cracker. You might need to make sure you've packed a brolly and an anorak because who knows what the Arden Forest might, might uh, throw up in late September. And then the other one, definitely for your diary, is at the end of the year, Algarve in October, when a lot of Northern Europe is pretty chilly, 
two ELMS races taking yeah, place there. If you could do me the favour of holding off before you book Portimao until after we booked our Airbnb, that would be <laughs> really excellent. Yeah, but thanks. Uh, I'm genuinely considering bringing the family down. Um, unfortunately, the Husky won't go in a suitcase. Okay. Uh, he objects to that. But uh, uh, it, it, I think the weather at that time of the, the year, there's plenty of really, really good um, and pretty cheap accommodation, cheap flights, great welcome in Portugal uh, around that time and I'll be packing my suitcase and knocking on the door of one of the locals and seeing whether or not they'll pop me up for a night. Someone's Fingers due. crossed. <laughs> Here's Rodrigo Sales in the Nielsen Racing colours, not the usual paint scheme for the 24 car though, so it's great to have Nielsen back and in effectively the top class, top class of, of car anyway. Indeed, and all of a sudden Johnny with under Six and a half minutes to go by the time I finish this, set, sesh, uh, this, this sentence. Certainly have to finish that sentence. Um, it becomes a little bit more urgent because the opportunities to improve are yep. significantly reduced. It is Giorgio Road at the moment on top of the times with a 132.012. Significant gap to Alexandra Kwani, Fred Portad, Henrik Hedman, who will play no further part in the session. Uh, Dennis Anderson, Sally Yollock, who you would expect to be significantly higher up that uh, order on form, Rodrigo Salas, Ditto, Jane, Jim McGuire, Daniel Schneider, Francois Peroda right at the bottom and certainly work to do there, and no time so far for Tom Van Rompuy in the DCAR engineering squad. So we've got under six minutes now for improvements to come, and trust me, the body language for these cars is going to get a little more urgent with time running out because we've had nearly two thirds of the session and obviously if you have a if there is a stoppage in the session everyone has to go back to the pit lane the car involved needs to be recovered as in Henrik Hedman's Dragon Speed car then the session live again but it takes an outlap before and more than that these days with tyre warming necessary as well once you're out on the circuit so they are going to run a little short of time here they'll get at least one hot lap with the tyres properly in the operating window, maybe two if you've left the pit lane in a real hurry. Giorgio Roda, though, has hold of the spot that everybody else wants by the end of the next five minutes. Proton competitions, LMP2, Pro-Am entry, all Orica 07s with the Gibson power plant in this category and in the session after this as well for LMP2 uh, full-blooded, if you like, uh, entries, the Pro lineups. But there's some strong, strong names, even in the bronze column, uh, for this particular session. Yep, so Sally Yollock, uh, he goes to the top as I speak. It's a 131.327, seven tenths up. Now the reigning Asia Le Mans Series champion for DQR Engineering, by the way, uh, with Charlie Eastwood. Uh, he goes to the top in the 34 Racing Team Turkey car. Run for Sally by TF Sports and Tom Ferrier's operation. Where is Francois Perodo? He had track limits on the middle sector. Just there. Just there coming through the first corner, in fact. Still, by the way, if you look closely at the side of the car there, there's uh, one of those stripes that is a little less white than the others. That's because of a pretty convincing pit, uh, uh, sorry, pit garage fire earlier in the week. It's fuel spillage and ignited, and thankfully none of the AF Corsa guys were injured. Happened during the driver's briefing. I was in there... Uh, I mean, Steph Wentworth introduced to the field and it all went dark. You look outside and, oh dear, something's gone wrong. So the cockpit was unoccupied, no driver in the car when no the fire happened? No driver in the, in the cockpit uh, during that fire. And thankfully, one of the AF Corsa mechanics managed to get the door shut on that side. But there, are, there is still evidence of scorching on the bodywork Clearly. there, but yeah. uh, no harm to the car. Good. It's Rodrigo Sales, fourth place at the moment in the 24 car. It's fabulous gold livery for Nielsen Racing. Another driver, formerly of JMW Motorsport, Indeed. Rodrigo Sales, for a couple of years. See just there, by the way, on the flanks of the car, on that rear aero uh, aspect, uh, a bit of a favourite in sports car racing. I'll talk about that when we get another chance to see it. But here goes Sally Yolok again, and again goes quicker. This time it's a second clear, and all of a sudden Yolok looks very convincing indeed. Rodrigo Sales, by the way, goes third, but he's 2.3 seconds off uh, Yolok's time. Where can Perodo go? He goes up to fifth this time. So the gap's pretty large here, but this is what it's all about. You know, this is, you know, second, third, fourth year 
bronze ranked drivers in LMP2. These are not easy cars to draw no. the, uh, the pace out of. It well, they're also confidence. not easy cars to get your tyres up to temperature no, they're very really quickly not. as well. And remember, they've been sitting in the pit lane during the red flag with everything cooling off, and then you, you're pushing to get the tyres through another very quick heat cycle. And Sally Yolich clearly has been hustling that car left and right and left and right, as, although no real evidence of erratic weaving because you might be reported to the stewards for doing that but Jolic the man from Istanbul is fastest in this session so far from Giorgio Roda from Como in the north of Italy for Proton competition Rodrigo Salas of California Nielsen racing was fourth he's just been outpaced by Alexandre Kwani but Kwani has that lap deleted for track limits so Kwani drops back again to fourth place in this car the 37 down to turn one now yeah Kwani will be looking to do what he can to keep this car up to the front as best he can he shares that car this year by the way as we watch Francois Perodo fifth and improving shares with Nico Lapia and Melta Jakobsen that trio really a very intriguing one indeed the gaps are coming down by the way it's a great first sector for Giorgio Roda not quite on pole position pace but just a 10th off it what can Francois Perodo do he was fifth as Sally Jolic brings the car to the pit lane he was fifth and stays fifth it's an improvement but not enough he's uh, a tenth of a second off the fourth place time as Alexandra Kwani there's a minute to go he's going to get one more chance to do it Daniel Schneider of Sao Paulo, Brazil, is also uh, being given qualifying duties in the United Order Sports USA entry, car number 21. And no stranger to United Order Sports, this will be his fourth year on the bounce with the Yorkshire squad. And he's currently in sixth place, so jostling for fifth with Francois Perodo. More improvements further towards the sharp end though, Graham. Indeed. Uh, Sally Yolitz, by the way, gets out the car. Oh, he does, yeah. Metaphorically drops the mic and Moon walks out of there. Charlie Eastwood there <laughs> to congratulate him. It's going to be... Uh, uh, the gap, though, closes to just yeah. three tenths of a second and with another lap to come here from Giorgio Roda, could he spring a shock? Because that was a ultimately quickest final sector. This could be something for Giorgio Roda if he could keep this lap together. That was the squeal of tyres. Punished good years, though, from Giorgio Roda's car, the Proton Competition Machine, with the flat black and then LMP2 this... LMP2 cars may now go to the working this line. This tyre tread over the front the of line. the car. He's Do off. not go He's to the lifted off. Line. Tom von Rompuy potentially on for something a bit special line. as well. Checkered flag is as, uh, out. Jim McGuire, the 23, the line, is running in 10th flag. position for United Order Sports. was the first car to take the checkered flag. So Sally Jolic already parked up in pit road. Giorgio Roda for Proton Competition, the 99 car in second, but not looking to improve or won't be able to improve on this lap. And he has will be shown the checkered flag next time around. As Tom Van Rompuy in the Finding Nemo DKR Engineering livery. Looking good for seventh, looking good for something slightly better than that, potentially. He's only got two tenths of a second to try and find to move up at least one position. And Von Rompuy goes third in the DKR car. So Great third stuff. position for the Belgian. Just looking to see what Alexander Kwani can do on this final lap. He's looking good to potentially grab that third place. It's all about his third sector. 1.3 seconds down. He's not going to be pole. He's not going to be second. Uh, but it's all about the third sector. We can keep that together from fifth he could leap up the order he goes third he does go third under two seconds off and that is a great starting position for cool racing everybody Fun. else has pretty much received the checker flag we're just waiting for daniel schneider in the 21 car and he pits in fact so pulls to the right hand side and down pit road to join united order sports sally yolich it's uh, been warm work for the turkish driver but he got the work done pretty early on there a 130.947 to take pro-am two uh, sorry uh, pro-am p2 pole position and gets a point for that as well which is a brand new thing for it is 2023. a brand new thing it is the second Pro-Am pole in, uh, in succession for Racing Team Turkey, but the first as a, effectively uh, a full standalone class because it was Jack Aitken who announced yesterday he'll be uh, racing next weekend for the Cadillac team in Spa. They set the pole position in Portimao overall in uh, LMP2, but uh, Sally Yorick will be delighted with that in a rich vein of form after, as I say, really convincing stuff for DKR Engineering, a late... Um, 
squad being put together by Kendi uh, Kendi Jenklas at the uh, DK Engineering squad. Here is the proton competition car. Good run there as well from Giorgio Rodi. will be delighted with that, but absolutely over the moon, I'm sure, will be the racing team Turkey squad and Sally Yolok. Uh, he joined there by Charlie Eastwood and Louis Delatraz. Great stuff indeed. We're going to be rapidly, by the way, into the final of our 15-minute qualifying sessions. Again, this spectacular drone shot, ready for the cars yeah. to go green. Seven cars here, Johnny. It is the 22 from United Autosports, Phil Hansen, uh, followed by the 25 uh, Algarve Pro racing car, the hands of Daytona winner James Allen. Paul M. Chatan takes out the 28 Edex Sport car. Uh, the Duquesne team, car number 30, will be Neil Jarney. Uh, Jonathan Aberdeen will be in the 43 Inter Europol competition car. Cool Racing's other car in the LMP2 class, Resha de Geras. And Panis Racing, finally, the 65 car uh, in the hands of the newly stapled, we'll explain that one, Job van Utert. OK, I, I was very puzzled then when you uttered that sentence, but uh, I know the reasons for that, and, uh, yeah, it might take a bit of explaining. I'm also remembering, do you remember when uh, Logan Sargent sat in with Racing Team Turkey and took a poll at the Red Bull ring? That he was did. the previous year. They though. don't mess about, do they? Here is Sally Yolich has never taken a poll for Racing Team Turkey. and In the yellow mess. Uh, indeed, but he's not been permitted to necessarily because Correct. although it was open to bronze drivers before, it's a bronze exclusively session now, Pro-Am. We're on board with the number 65, this beautiful new colour scheme from Panis Racing in the hands of the Dutch star, Job van Utrecht. Why is he newly stapled? Well, there's a variety of things that happen in the run, uh, run into a new season. The fabulous shots you'll see of the entire grid put together. Uh, in one place and then the what we call the class off shot that's all the drivers in one place and Job uh, together with his teammates from Panis Racing was of course part of that that shot done on the grid a couple of days ago came to jump over the uh, the pit wall with all the energy and uh, athleticism of the young gazelle that he is uh, not realizing there was a metal frame above it and so Job at the moment has the top of his scalp held together with four surgical staples I've seen the pictures. Straight it, out of Hellraiser. It's folks. not pretty. No, I mean, he not. is a. It, I think he would agree. Uh, no one else would, but he would agree that he's a good-looking guy. But uh, don't so we, over the years, we've had Narain Karthikeyan dislocated his shoulder. shoulder by vaulting a pit lane. Correct. Hurry. On the way on the way to the grid for Le Mans and didn't start. Couldn't in fact, start. Andre Lotter's so breakthrough pain. race that race. Yeah. And now you can add to uh, the archives of pit wall slash fence above pit wall moments uh, Jop van Outert yes. or Jop van Ouchert <laughs> how, well, how I'm going to refer to him for the rest of the weekend oh dear me right uh, but see he's, he's since uh, been out the car with, with no problems and, uh, you would imagine in all seriousness putting that helmet on though is going to be a touch painful well you know it just has to be careful on the strength of the products I think he's putting on the neatly coiffured van Outert's uh, head, but uh, Indeed, yeah. I'm sure we'll be absolutely fine. He's putting a brave face on it, and yes. uh, still a, a, an uber talent when it comes to getting at the wheel of a prototype. He's a former LMP3 champion in this series, Indeed. and then moved up with G-Drive to LMP2 a couple of years ago. Narrow squeak on the title with them, of course. Uh, but James Allen, it is at the moment. Uh, Phil Hansen. That have not completed a, a racing a, a lap yet. James Allen first across the line. It's a 132.259 is the marker for everybody else. Uh, James from Australia has put in some stellar performances so far this week in testing, topping several sessions. Russia to Giras, closest to at the moment, but these are early times with these tyres still coming up to temperature. You would expect in this session the pace to become more quickly and be more consistent. These seven drivers will instantly make a liar of me. Uh, free practice one earlier in the weekend was topped by Malta Jakobsen's 129.8 in the 37 uh, car then. And that's uh, in the Pro-Am ranks. And then the following FP2 session, which was early this morning, fastest car there was the 43 um, which is seen in this class, the inter Europol competition car. This, this car, in fact, that we are viewing something, now. Something going wrong here with this pit stop. That's, yeah, uh, that's not great. But a couple of a couple of three issues here already. Uh, team management actually uh, raising voices towards the pit crew. 
not not happy with the way this is. Car is not straight in its box. That will, I think, be straightened. Now they'll let it go. It needs to be up on the dolly jacks there, doesn't it? There you oh, go. There That's because go. it can't. So they yeah, put in uh, the, the little wheelie trolley underneath there. Visit Angola. The reason for that, Rui Andrade, the silver-rated driver who joins into Europol competition, along with Oli Caldwell, what a talent he is, and Jonathan Aberdeen, who set the best time in FP2 earlier this morning. And to go second, three tenths of a second the gap, uh, and a further three and a half tenths back, Paul Chatin. Also within the same second, Cool Racing's 47 car with Rashad De Giris. So 129.815 is the mark from uh, James Allen. He's just improved that time. Uh, and uh, Phil Hansen, 130.1, 130.4 for Chatin, 130.7 for Rashad De Giris. That cost time and valuable on track time for Inter Europol. They will not be happy with that. And my guess there will be a slightly shouty uh, afters for that one. That, that did not look a well-disciplined pit stop. No, and I was trying to work out how close the vicinity of the Duquesne car, whether it needed to have pulled across the nose of that car. But normally, if it's an awkward pit lane entry during the race, let's say, they'll sometimes put it up on the dolly jacks and straighten it up. But all of that takes time, and you do not want to be uh, with a, a clumsy pit stop like that during the race, whereby we're doing 40-odd minute stints. So that's going to be what five stops probably to get them to the finish and uh, it's all about spending as little time as possible in pit road the, the, no minimum reference pit stop time for this top class of car after the first two sectors on the laps they're currently on the top five separated by three tenths of a second this this uh, qualifying session is heading into a bit of a frenzy of activity at very rapid pace James Allen improves again. It's 129.803. Who's next through? There's an improvement for Rachel de Geras. Improvement to fourth for Jacques Venuta. Paul Chatan improves. But he's still shuffled down to fifth. Phil Hansen has come to the pits. So he's bailed out on that lap. Eight minutes to go. But clearly, it's either a problem or some strategy here for United Autosports. But James Allen at the moment still in control of this session. But the top five separated by just over half a second. Duquesne have just released Neil Cherney into the uh, fray and we, as we saw into Europol with Jonathan Aberdeen uh, also up there this is going to get crazy before we get to the end of this session we still have over seven and a half minutes to go so not quite yet at the halfway point Johnny no next 10 seconds and we will be there and uh, do you throw more tyres at it the tyres are so heavily restricted this year and just the one compound as well previously two different co tyre constructs for the dry tyre, the slick tyre, and for the wet tyre. But this year, it's just one compound of each. So you just, you know, if, if it's a dry race, well, these are your tyres. You can't choose anything else, effectively. But it's three sets that you have to make use of across qualifying and then the race. Three sets when we're, they're all going to be doing six stints. Chatham belts up this one. This is them. What they'll be doing here is, is putting on another set of tyres Fresh tyres, have another crack at it. Remember, these tyres will have to be used in the race, yep. but they're effectively just burning two, three, four laps at, uh, of qualifying. So these very part-used tyres uh, will be used in the race later. That will be a factor on anybody that's chosen to save the tyre wear in a position where we've got a closely fought race, which, let's face it, we always do. Yeah. But if they're doing 40-minute stints, you split that into a four-hour race, that is six stints, five stops, and one set of tyres will then have to be double stinted, whether that be for the same driver into a double stint or whether they save that set of tyres for later on in the race for the same driver. But, yeah, three sets across six stints is the bare bones, really, of Goodyear tyres as the accelerator is applied for edex sport and there's a slight squirm as that car rejoins the session paul luke chatat showing how little grip is at his disposal early on i'd say one of the changes uh, for this year because of that cold tire, i think you are allowed to spin the tires because it's very difficult not to uh, now but it will take a full lap uh, and probably a little more to get the optimum uh, temperature into these tyres to go for a qualifying run so realistically the cars leaving the pits now may get one shot if they're lucky there might be two uh, but there's not much left in this session 
unless they can nail getting the, t the heat in the tyres, finding the space on track and finding the pace on this circuit to Barcelona Catalunya. James Allen, fastest in the car that he shares with Alex Lynn and Kiffin Simpson of Barbados. Although lives in the States these days, Phil Hansen second fastest in the number 22 United Auto Sports car. Then it's Richard de Guerres for Cool Racing ahead of Jop van Aerten, Paul Uchata, Neil Jarney, these names, and Jonathan Aberdeen still with his best to give, you have to think, considering his performance in FP2 earlier today. And he's already found 2.3 seconds through the first sector of the South Africa. So, Neil Jarney, it is here in the sixth place Duquesne team car. He's under two tenths off pole pace in his first sector. What is the second sector, the long sector here, going to be like? Certainly will launch him up here if he keeps the, this on the island from his current sixth place uh, in the order. And has not yet set what he would regard as being, and we would regard as being, a uh, competitive lap time. It's just the way this session has fallen. Uh, he is closing in on pole position pace here. Neil Charney, Le Mans winner, world champion in the WEC, keeps it just within track limits. Uh, seven place just now as he drops behind Jonathan Aberdeen. He is a purple middle sector. What can the Swiss driver do as he comes to the line with four minutes and ten seconds to go? He goes to the top by a tenth of a second. It's a 129.692. Duquesne team, uh, could they be on for a pole position here in Barcelona, Johnny? Mightily impressive final sector there. An absolute best. 26.4 and he certainly wasn't hanging around in the middle sector as well Neil Jarney having never raced in this series before so uh, be quite some debut I mean he's fairly well experienced elsewhere and he's turning the wick up again on the next uh, sequential lap so 26.5 is even quicker now for the Swiss driver three tenths quicker that's a mighty improvement on a first sector time and whatever strategy Duquesne have chosen to chuck at this it's clearly working at the moment we're into three minutes and 20 seconds to go no one else remotely close to that kind of pace with the exception of Phil Hansen under a tenth off that pace in the first sector so watch that car as well and indeed Hansen is uh, even closer with a purple middle sector So a cracking middle sector as well from Neil Jarney, not quite as quick as Hansen's, but it's a further improvement for the Duquesne team car. Watching what's going on with it to Europol. Neil Jarney, Phil Hansen goes second. Mm. One thousandth of a second off Neil Jarney's previous time. Phenomenally close margins, and we were ex to be expecting this, frankly, because of the build-up and the level of talent involved in this session. Two and a half minutes to go. Phil Hansen's found two absolute bests. Neil Jarney still hangs on to the best sector one time, though. But he, uh, Jarney crosses the line and increases that gap from one thousandth to one tenth exactly. So it's one twenty-nine five nine three from Jarney. It is one twenty-nine six nine three from Phil Hansen. All of a sudden, James Allen. Uh, gap is two tenths. It's one tenth, two tenths, five, and then six tenths for the top five with cars improving up and down this screen. This, I reckon, would be a first pole position for Duquesne, whether they're known right. as Duquesne Engineering or Duquesne Team yep. since the back end of 2018. So Duquesne Engineering, when they were car number 29, did take a pole position. At the same race as the last pole for JMW. Uh, OK, yes. Well, it was at the at the Algarve race. I need, and I need to look out whether yep. it was Nico Jama, which probably most likely, or Nelson Pantiotici, who did the time. But it's been quite a wait for Duquesne, if they can stay there. Oh, there's so many times here that are coming. Here comes John Panuta, sixth place at the moment. He's going to improve his time if that, uh, that lap stayed together. Where is the... He's come up to fourth. Resha Zajiris goes second. Splits Hansen and Johnny. Johnny still holds the, the, uh, the pole position. 74 thousandths per second, though. Resha Zajiris for cool racing. Duquesne team, by the way, have come to the pits. They're done yep. a minute to go. James Eight. Allen goes top. Allen goes top, 129.585, with no purple sectors. No. Just an improvement for that car. Eight thousandths of a second quicker than Neil Jarney. 
how slim do you want your margins? You can still get slice that down to an eight uh, eight further pieces on our timing screen. But James Allen to Neil Jarney, Algarve to Duquesne, eight thousandths, and then a massive yawning gap of zero eight two of a second back to Richard de Geras. Top four separated by 0.108 of a second, and actually quicker than all of them at the moment is Jop van Utert. Although James Allen makes a liar of me by going quicker again. So this looks to me at the moment, with 18 seconds left on the clock, this could be down between De Geris, James Allen and Jop van Utert. Loses a little bit of time on his second sector, but it's still a quick one. Another quick one, Richard De Geris looks like he might have this, you know. Four seconds to go. This looks like it might be going to Cool Racing. Could it be Algarve Pro? Could it be Cool? Could it be Panis Racing? It could be any of those three, all on quick laps. The time has run down. It's going to be what can they do going to the line? To the line. Faruta is not going to do it. He crosses the line two tenths off, stays in fifth place. Dagiris! Dagiris to the top in the 47 cool racing car, 129.396, which is nearly two tenths of a second clear of James Allen's effort. But James is on a quick one as well. He's just done a PB in the first sector, but it's not going to be enough as James Allen comes across the line. He does improve and gets the gap down to 39 thousandths of a second. But Richard Dagiris. I think we've waited long enough to know that Cool Racing will keep that time. No element of a track limits infringement there whatsoever. And Cool Racing take another pole position. So they continue their run from earlier on. At, well, a, a perfect season last year in P3 with Malta Jakobsen. Continues on with Marcus Siebert in LMP3. And Cool Racing get a double pole in this lengthy ELMS qualifying with the LMP2 pole going to Richard de Geras. Top two separated by 39 thousandths, top three by under two tenths, top four by under three tenths, top five by under four tenths, and the top six by 0.443 of a second. The outlier, the outlier is under eight tenths off. Absolutely amazing stuff from LMP2. Boy, oh boy, have we got a season to come here, Johnny Palmer. And we haven't yet mentioned who else is in the 47 car because a certain Jose Maria Lopez, current Toyota factory hypercar driver, is also in that lineup along with young man Vlad Lomko. But Richard de Geras, a huge step on for the 19 year old Massive. from France uh, who has been bumped up to gold, but he is living up to the expectation there. A, a former uh, FIA Formula 3 racer he came through formula renault as well but well and truly making his home now in sports car racing and richard de Geras snatches it very late on and by a really small margin has been around this scene for a year or so already there was that feeling that he was not living up to his billing last season but boy oh boy has he just blown that into the weeds yeah, yeah. look at the talent he has brushed aside in that 15 minutes 129.396 as mentioned 39 thousandths of a second faster than the Algarve Pro Racing time of James Allen number 25 who will start on the front row ahead of Neil Jarney's Duquesne team they came narrowly close to the first pole position in a long time a number of seasons but Gilles Duquesne and his outfit have to make do with a third place start alongside Phil Hansen for United Autosports Jop von Outer for Panis Jonathan Aberdeen for Inter Europol competition and Edex Sports Paul Luke Shatter a, a triple champion in ELMS only seventh fastest well there you go Richard De Gira sweeps away the challenge from James Allen this year's Daytona 24 hours winner from the world champion and Le Mans winner Neil Jarni in third place from the Le Mans winner in LMP2, LMS and WC champion uh, Phil Hansen, and from you know one of the stars of LMP2 in recent years, Jop van Utert. Amazing qualifying session. What a 15 minutes that was. And there in the background, looking at his phone, Jose Maria Lopez, uh, pretty happy with that. You have to imagine. That spotlight very Delta much Jacobson. on his uh, French teammate, Jose from Argentina. He'd be on the point to toe to say, I think we need to get this kid's number. <laughs> absolutely cracking stuff. I'm sure I he has it already. Can't wait for tomorrow now. No, this is absolutely mega. Yeah. It's going to be a, a cracking first race, all starting at uh, just after the hour of 11 o'clock, uh, Central European Summertime. Race start 11.30 for four hours, obviously four hours of Barcelona, the opening round of the season. This is the only ELMS race that will take place 
this side of Le Mans as well. So we've got to cherish this because it'd be quite a wait then until round two at Le Castellet in July. But uh, it's already looking like a barnstormer. And there are four, yes, four different classes to feast our eyes upon tomorrow. Great stuff. We wait to hear from the pole setting team. So the cars are put back away for a bit of a snooze before the madness that starts tomorrow. Four hours of action around here. Remember, you can follow that. Uh, we've got two hours of racing to come with the Michelin Le Mans Cup. And Steph Wentworth has stepped in there and she's grabbed none other than world champion and Le Mans winner Pichito Jose Maria Lopez, who is part of this team. Over to you, Steph. Here with Jose Maria Lopez, driver of number 47. Uh, your teammate just put it on pole. It must feel good, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he did a, a super job. Um, all the team, crew racing, everyone involved worked really hard. I mean, uh, super competition out there. Uh, lap times were improving. Um, yeah, honestly, it, was, it felt good. You know, it was in the last lap. So he built up the pace slowly and uh, yeah, super job. I mean, we couldn't have, uh, ask more for that. And the field is incredibly close with these LMP2 cars because the, the, the differences between you guys and your lap times was incredibly slim. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of not used to those differences anymore, you know. Uh, yeah, super tight competition and, uh, yes, great drivers as well. So I'm looking forward for next races. Maybe I can get the chance of quality. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Jose Maria Lopez maybe going back to his days in the World Touring Car Championship when it was so tight in the tin tops. There's nothing that would necessarily suggest he's going to be put in to qualifying. He said he's got to earn that role within the team with Richard de Guerra as the 19-year-old heading on through. But talk about doing the business and at the right time as well. Also great strategy from Cool Racing. They're getting better and better with that about putting the car out onto the track at the correct time so that once the chequered flag is flown, nobody else had the chance to respond. I hope you enjoyed that. Back tomorrow from 11.10. Bye for now.